Good evening, and welcome to the Not So Perfect Bigfoot Show. I'm your host, Miss V, and tonight I have Brandon from the Ten Full Tales Podcast. Brandon will talk to you about anything, and we are going to uh, give Brandon the floor, and Brandon's going to tell you where you can find his podcast, how to get in touch with him, because the sky is the limit on his show, and I think you're going to enjoy Brandon tonight. Brandon, put it out there. Yeah, thanks for having me. For anyone listening who would be interested in Tinfoil Tales, the easiest way to find it would be tinfoiltales.com. From there, there are links, but basically any streaming platform like Apple, Spotify, Spreaker, there is a YouTube channel. Anywhere you listen to podcasts at Tinfoil Tales is on there. And if you'd like to be a guest on my show, you can go to the website. There's a contact button. It'll send an email to me, or you can email me directly, which is Tinfoil Tales podcast at gmail.com you can also find me on facebook or instagram or anything like that just look for tinfoil tells or on facebook is brandon tinfoil tells and reach out to me there well i know this i know you hustle for your show and um you you are not a lazy podcaster i can tell you <laughs> that so so i know you do your podcast but there is a road that led you down to do this do you want to go into that what you experienced and how you got here. Yeah, sure. Basically I grew up always being a big fan of monsters in general, like monster movies. I was a huge Godzilla fan and I used to watch the X-Files as a kid. And I never took a whole lot of stock in believing stuff like that was real. I had like strange experiences here and there, but as a kid, I always just thought it was my imagination. And it wasn't up until I was already like, almost 23 years old. I was leaving work one night. I used to work third shifts. So it was about 4.30 in the morning. And I was driving down the road. And my coworker who was driving in front of me. And at the time, I don't know if I remember if it was my coworker. I just know there's a vehicle driving in front of me. And he swerves off to the edge of the road. Then he swerves back on the road. And I see what looks like a person in the middle of the road. But it's not a person. As I'm driving up to it, it looks like someone wrapped in a big black blanket or a black cloak or something like that because the way they're moving, it, it take a step and like its body was like weird, almost shaky, glitchy looking. Like it didn't look natural. So I had to hit my brakes and I basically swerved to the edge of the road and this thing just keeps walking next to me. And I think it bumps into my mirror and I'm driving a Ford Explorer at the time. This thing leaning forward had like a weird lean to it when it take a step it was taller than my vehicle wow. it was not a person because i didn't see arms i didn't even see a head it was literally just big thick legs and a big thick chest torso looking thing it was solid black when it went past my window there was no fur there was no clothing it was just solid black like a walking black shadow torso or something but it was solid like it wasn't like it wasn't a shadow like i couldn't see through it anything and when it got behind the vehicle you could see the red from my taillights were illuminated like my headlights were shining on it it didn't it blocked off the headlights it was obviously solid and it did the same thing with the red taillights but i could see the legs on they were super thick by this point once it gets behind me i just drive forward take off the car that was in front of me, I seen pulls into this gravel driveway. It's like a parking lot because right before you get to the highway and I realized it's my coworker. So I pull in next to him and he rolls down his window and I roll up or I roll down mine up as I pull up next to him. He's like, did you see that? I said, yeah, what was it? He's like, it didn't have a head. And that's what I'm like agreeing with. Like, I didn't see a head either. I was like, we need to go back and see what this thing was. He's like, trying to like not he doesn't want to go basically saying are you crazy i was like i want to go back to see what this thing was like if it was a person it's like what, what do they do in the middle of the road like like my yeah. curiosity got to me and i convinced him to follow me back so we pulled out back on the road we headed back the same direction it's maybe only a quarter of a mile not even too far from where we were and is in the middle of the road like in the same general area but in the middle of the road now there's a large black animal lane across the road and as i got close to it i'm maybe like 30 feet and i stopped my vehicle and my headlights are shining on it it looks like a large black dog 
and it's laying there with its back to me, but it's just laying completely on its side. Like you'd see like a dog, I was thinking maybe the dog got hit by a car, but it wasn't there when we just drove through. So I'm thinking, well, was this what was in the road? Like none of that makes any sense now, but like at the time I'm trying to figure out like what was going on. And that animal wasn't there because I'd have ran it over it the way it was laying, like it was in the pathway of the direction I was going. So like, where did it come from? It only been like, a minute or two since we turned around to come back and I get out of my vehicle. My coworker pulls up behind me and he rolls down his window. He's like, what are you doing? I was like, there's a dead dog in the road. So I started to walk up to it and I'm maybe 15 feet from it and it lifts its head up and it's facing, like I said, the opposite direction. It looks its head up and it turns back and looks at me. Well, my headlights and his headlights are shining. So it's eyes are like reflecting the light but they're reflecting like a yellowy glowing color. And then it just lets out this really low rumbly growl. So I instantly stopped because I'm like, "Uh Oh, it's not dead. And I'm still thinking this is a normal dog because laying there, I seen like it has really puffy fur and (coughs) excuse me. It has like, a long bushy tail. Someone asked me before, did it have a tail? I never thought about it until they asked me about it. And I was like, I don't remember if it had it. I was like, no, it had a tail. Cause it was laying there. It looked like a dog. So it had a long bushy, typical dog looking tail. Everything about it looked like a German shepherd or a wolf type of a dog. Like it had the pointy ears and everything else to, to me. And at the time I had a German shepherd at my parents' house. I still lived at home at that point. We had a German shepherd. So to me, I was like, Oh, it's a dog. I want to help him. He's a hurt dog. And, when it growls at me, I'm like, I realize he's clearly mad. He doesn't want me going near it. And then it starts to like try to stand up, but it does like a couple steps, like a hobble. And then it stands directly up. And by that, I mean on two feet, it stood up like a human. And I'm very skeptical. Like I don't believe in a whole lot of things. Like I'm very open-minded now, but back then I didn't believe in like anything like that. So my brain is like trying to process and like, what is going on? Well, when it starts to stand up, I hear my coworker who's still in the car. I won't say what he said, but he basically tells me to get back in the, he tells me to get back in the car and some choice words, which I can't move at this point. Like I'm too busy. Like, I'm like, what is this? What is going on? Like, I can't process why this thing is standing up and it stood up directly like a person. I'm six foot three and we were basically eye to eye and we we're 15 feet from each other. It had very much the appearance of a large black wolf. It had the pointy ears on top. It had the canine snout. It did not have the stereotypical quote unquote werewolf dog man features though. It looked like a very normal dog or a wolf. It had paws. It didn't have like fingers or anything that I noticed. The only thing that really made like, I think about like the way it held its front arms up, its front legs, whatever, you know how a dogs will be like frontwards and they kind of have like a bend to them. Mm -hmm. It didn't do that. Like they just hung to its side like this straight down. Like it had shoulders, like a person. That is very strange to me because it's not how a canine would be biologically. That's, it doesn't, that's not how its bone structure is. I honestly don't remember that its bottom legs had the backwards been like some like canine legs do. Over the years, I've thought to myself, is it a person in a costume? Because it literally had like a very humanoid stance to itself. But that doesn't make any sense either. Because why would a person be out in the middle of the road at 430 in the morning? Are they stupid enough yeah. to get ran, ran over or shot or who knows what? But even if it was a person in a costume, it is a very convincing costume because it literally looked real. It growl, like it growled at me. Its eyes were glowing. It, it was a real animal. People's like, oh, it was a bear. It, I know what a bear looks like. I'm 15 feet from it. It's not a bear. Bears don't have bushy tails. They don't have the same features of this thing. I know what a dog looks like. I know what a wolf looks like. And I know what a bear looks like. But we're looking eye to eye. Maybe five seconds go by. And he kind of crouches down and it brought its legs back up like this to itself. And it's like down in almost like a squatting position. It's very strange how like it kneeled down. And then it like 
someone just re re recently said it did a crab walk. I never thought of it like that, but kind of like it went off very strange, like off to the side, a very weird way of moving. Like it was in still not a crouching position, but I'd never seen it use its front legs. It kept them up here as it walked off. At this point, it goes to the fence line. This whole area is like a two to three square mile deer preserve. So there's an eight foot fence that wraps around the whole area, all this woods and stuff. I didn't see where it went. I don't know if it actually went over the fence, if it went through the fence or under the fence, but it got out of the headlights where it was dark again and I couldn't see where it went. So at this point, I'm like, I got to get out of here because I don't know where this thing's going. So I started to walk back to my car. Well, at this point, my coworker had gotten out and he's standing next to my vehicle. So I walk up to him and I'm like, we're trying to like, what is, what was that? Like, what, what was it? We never know what it was. And I happened to look down on the ground and also on its hind legs is a field mouse standing between my coworker and I, the mouse is the weirdest thing to me in this whole situation because the mouse was cleaning itself. He's all wet, but he's using its paws to wipe its ears, wipe its face, wipe its fur. And it's standing like literally between him and I. So I take my shoe and I like push it a little bit. He just keeps cleaning itself. It doesn't even care that I just touched it. I don't know of any type of a wild rodent, especially like a field mouse or whatever, that's going to allow you to touch it, let alone not care that you did. Wow. At, at this point, I'm like, I'm, I'm done creeped out. And I tell him I'm going home. I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm done. And I, I'm done with it. So I go home. He goes home. The next morning I wake up and I do a little sketch of what I think is this quote unquote werewolf, because that's the only I could think of back then, because this is February, 2007. I didn't know anything about upright walking canines at this point, other than werewolf. And I sketched this picture. I'm not much of an artist, but I drew what I thought I saw and I upload it to a forum. And someone said that I saw a Michigan dog man. They commented on it. I never heard of that before. Like, what is a Michigan dog man? So I go down that rabbit hole and basically find out about this song that was wrote in the 80s and how people remember reporting and seeing these walking werewolf type things that they called dog men. So I got all this information and I kind of went back to work a couple nights later because it was our weekend. So when I go back to work to talk to my coworker about it, one of our other coworkers was laughing as I'm trying to talk to my Coworker about it, like looking at it now, I, I guess I would laugh too. But like, he's like, "Oh, did you run over a werewolf?" <laughs> and the uh oh, he pisses off my other coworker, who pulls me aside and basically says to knock it off. It was just a normal dog. He doesn't want to talk about it. If I keep bringing it up, he's just going to tell everyone I'm crazy. He doesn't want anything to do with it. Just I need to leave it alone. So I didn't talk about it because. If anyone knew who this guy was, you didn't really want to piss him off. And I just left it be. And for 15 years, I just, I knew it, it wasn't just a normal dog, but that's what I kept telling myself it had to have been. I said it had to have been a normal dog that got hit by a car, broke its front legs. It was trying to eat the mouse when I got hit by a car. The mouse was traumatized. This is why it was all wet because the dog was trying to eat it. And that's why when we first drove up on it, it looked strange trying to walk on two legs because it doesn't know how because its front legs are broken. And that is the most plausible, explainable thing that I can come up with, except the very first thing we saw walking in the road was so much bigger than what the dog was. That thing had to have been at least standing straight up, directly up, had to have been over seven feet tall. And its legs were so much thicker. And again, no head, no arms. And its body was so much thicker. The dog was not that size. The dog, again, me and him were eye to eye. I'm six foot three, so whatever was walking originally that we swerved to miss was bigger than that. So I can't explain what the very first thing was. And that's where I get hung up on it as is what was the first thing? What is a dog walking on two legs? Why is this mouse here? Like none of it makes any sense. The whole thing is crazy. And it's literally made me feel crazy about it because it doesn't make any sort of sense to me. And I'm the type of person that has to know what this was and because of that curiosity is why i do the show because i sat on it for so long and now i'm just like you know what? i want to talk to other people because 
other people have had to have experience like this too. But so far, I haven't actually met anyone who had anything somewhat similar. Like I've heard people talk about Dogman or other thing like that, but nothing with like the amount of weird stuff that happened within like a two to three minute span. Like my stuff to me is just, it's just straight crazy. Two questions. Were the arms, did the arms have biceps like a person? Not that I remember other than they just hung straight down. Like that was what was the weirdest thing to me. Like I was staring at the thing's face mostly because I wanted to make sure he's not going to come in. That's the danger but, area. Like I'm looking at its face. Like, is it going to just lunge at me and rip my face off because I'm right here? And people don't seem to understand when I tell them, like, I'm literally 15 feet from this. So from where I'm sitting at, it's directly at the wall. So if it wanted to, it all had to do was one lunge and it could have had me. Instead, it wanted to go away from me. So people were like, were you afraid? I was like, I wasn't afraid. I was just more concerned for like, what is this thing? Like, why is this dog standing on two feet? Why is, is he going to growl? Is he going to be just growl? Is he going to bite me? Like, that's what was running through my mind. Like, I... It was like curiosity and confusion because I'd never seen anything like that at that point. I think where um, people get confused, they expect you to have a particular reaction to something. And if your reaction is not in their norm, then they can be uh, pretty judgmental about it. But let me ask you this. Do you think the first thing that you saw might have been fighting with the canine type creature on the road? and slammed it and that there's a reason i'm going i'm asking you that yeah i, I kind of a, have an idea where you're going with it i've been told before by someone else that uh maybe the first thing that we saw was a sasquatch that just got done beating the crap out of the dog man but i i honestly don't know there's a gentleman in north carolina and he doesn't mind if we talk about his story but um back in um I think it was the late 80s. He was on patrol near Raven Rock, North Carolina. And he drove up on uh, what he thought were uh, two dogs fighting. They turned out to be dog men fighting in the road. And there was one crouched in the ditch. Literally, he's, you know, he's getting out of his car and he's trying to figure out what's going on. And one of them picked the other one up and just kept body slamming them. And he looked to the side of the road, and there's one in the ditch in the road. And he yelled at it and put a spotlight on it. And the one that was body slamming the other one turned, you know, turned to come toward him and he jumped in his patrol car. And that's why I say, do you think there could have been two creatures out there fighting? And the other one just got slammed hard. But mm -hmm. I I you mean, it's a, know. it's a possibility. I don't know where the first thing went, and I don't know where the dog came from. I don't know if they're the same thing. I don't know if they're completely different. I don't know. Like, size-wise, they're not the same. But that doesn't mean the first thing and that they're thing in the mouth, they're, they're all not somehow. Can, someone, if you talk to different people in their own perspectives or whatever about it is, maybe it was a shapeshifter. Maybe something was bleeding into our reality to where the first thing we encountered was manifesting into our, like into a form, like it was taking the shape of the dog. And then the dog walked off looking weird or whatever because it was trying to change into something else and it changed into the mouse. I don't know if I believe in all that type of stuff, but I, I can't, it, I can't rule things out at this point. But, you go in, um, especially collecting stories, you go in with a cer certain perspe perspective in life. And the more you go down the rabbit hole, the more you realize that there's some very educated people and people with life experience that have credible lives and have, uh, you know, they're very um, productive in society that they have had experiences like this. And it's probably the way you were treated at work is why they don't come out and say it. Mm -hmm. But there, I, the, I have spoken to some very credible 
people and the more I learn about ley lines and just the energy of the earth and the history of the earth and you know there, there's so much out there I would be I think I would be very ignorant to say there's not more out there than what I understand and I, I do think the uh I think that most people do not come forth with their encounters because um yeah I mean are you going to sit there and break bread with your friend at work and tell him you've seen a portal open up or you know seeing something come out of a portal or seeing shadow figures or yeah I mean you're going to get the cold shoulder or you're going to be called crazy and it's just not something that people are willing to open up about but the more you go down the rabbit hole the more bizarre it gets but it makes sense would you agree with that no i agree anymore i i think everyone thinks i'm crazy already so i'll, I'll talk about a portal i'll talk about a dog man i'll talk about aliens coming down <laughs> i don't care at this point but no i understand like that's why i didn't talk about it for so long because you're crazy like if you talk about stuff like that you're literally you're either a liar or you're crazy or something or you're like, a yeah like you hopes it yeah yeah um i've told my dog man experiences very few times because of that, that exact um attitude toward it and it wasn't anything extraordinary and so i do think that um i don't think it stops at dog man and i don't think it stops at bigfoot but one of the things that i have seen out there is the bigfoot community you know when you have someone that's had a bigfoot experience it's hard enough for them to come out but then for someone to come out about dog man in the bigfoot world it seems to me that the and it seems to me the bigfoot community doesn't want to accept it but i've spoken to people also that said they believe bigfoot is more canine so i mean it, it's a mystery so you know i don't know where we go from there but it's just it's our guessing game 15 years ago, everyone thought Bigfoot was just a undiscovered primate, the people that believed in it. Now, with modern times, there's a lot of people that believe in the woo side of it, which basically the lights, the people see the little strange lights, the other things where it disappears, the tracks disappear, how it can be in one place and then go disappear here. And like, there's so much weird stuff that goes on. Now people are throwing out the term a lot within the last five years of interdimensional. I never really heard much about interdimensional stuff before other than as a kid, I was a big Ninja Turtles fan as a kid. So basically we had Dimension X. That was where the bad guys were from. So I knew about stuff like that. And Einstein says there's other dimensions mathematically or whatever. So it's a possibility that I understand where people are going with it. Like we all vibrate at a different frequency. There's other levels, there's other things, other frequencies, other vibrations. Yeah. So maybe these things are bleeding into our world. And that's where this whole woo thing comes from. And that's how I've started to tie things together is I think everything is connected. I think with the UFOs, I think with paranormal, I think with all sorts of the weird cryptid stuff, I think it's all connected in one way or another. And I don't know how else to describe it other than, Maybe what people are encountering are not from our reality, like not from our 3D world. Maybe they're from a higher dimension. Like you can slow your vibrations down and they've learned to do that and to come into our world. We're not able to speed up our vibration to go into theirs. If that makes any sort of sense. It does make sense. Um, I, I always have to get someone to say the word, but it, they're in a different realm. Realm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Realm different realm yeah. a different dimension a different reality a different plane of existence but is it that all on frequency and uh mm -hmm. frequencies yeah. and vibrations everything about matter is frequencies and vibrations so if you can change your frequency and your vibration you can go through different dimensions yeah and there's actually people that learn to do that and if you go back and look at ufos people did not believe they existed they they called the ufo community you know telling them they were mistaken with 
mistaken them for planes and weather balloons and everything else. But yeah, you have the government that just stepped up and said they're real. Mm -hmm. Same thing. And it makes me wonder about mind speak. I used to laugh about mind speak. I used to think, well, I would say, okay, okay, you know, that that's your experience, but you get so many people that don't know each other that experience the same thing. And then I started reading where the CIA actually used that mm -hmm. as it, and it was a part of their program along with remote viewing. And, you know, the uh, U S used remote viewing to actually find a nuclear submarine in Russia uh, that the movie red October was based yeah. on. And so, and this is in, I mean, it's, it's public record on the CIA website. So, you know, I've been speaking to a lot of people that use remote viewing in the cryptid world. I'm actually going to have a show on that shortly, but it, it, you're right. It all ties together. Have you had any experiences um, or, the, or the same connection with the guests that have come on your show when it comes to mind speak or even to re on the level of the remote viewing? I haven't had anyone that connected anything like that. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I don't remember if anyone's ever said they had mind speak. Mm -hmm. I think they've said before, like they felt things, but I don't know if they've ever had mind speak. But the one person that always stood out to me was survivor man les stroud he, he are you familiar with the show yeah. yeah he actually had his own versions of bigfoot stuff and he's talked about it before he heard them speaking to him in the mind i never expected someone like him to come out and talk about that but he's come out on record saying that when he's looked for these things he's heard voices in his head telling him things it freaked him out at first. I said, this guy's got his own TV show on Discovery Channel and all this other stuff that he does. He's very putting his reputation on the line at this rate to talk about something that sounds straight up crazy. Like, but he put it out there. And why would, why would I think any less of the guy and be like, oh, he's full of, of all the things that he does. Why would that be the one thing he's lying about, you know? So well, I, I think it take it takes a pretty uh, strong person to come out and tell their experiences. Now, is that the only experience you've had? Because I know you've had a, a quite an interesting life. You were in a rock band, and mm -hmm. I, you know you started your podcasting. I mean, the sky's the limit. What is your favorite subject to talk about, other than have you had another experience? There's been some things going on in my home, but I'd rather not bring that up tonight okay. just because it kind of, I just talked about it the other day and I, I will bring up this point of it. I think, uh, I think some of the things I talk about, I think there was something already maybe around our area. Mm -hmm. And when I mention it or talk about it, it kind of wants to throw things back. So the other night I came down here and I started to mess around with an episode. I was editing it. And then my wife asked me to go out and put the chickens up. So how long did that take me? About five minutes. I come back downstairs. I noticed there's a couple of dead flies here on my podcast desk. Didn't think anything of it. And then I started looking up in front. There's a bunch more and that wrapped all the way around my table. They were not there about five minutes ago. Where did all these dead fly? I end up having like 20 something flies. I have them upstairs in a little cup that I collected them in. They're all green flies and they're all dead and they manifested somehow all across my desk. And I can't explain where they came from within that short of amount of a time. The night before, someone had asked me if I've been having any weird stuff going on in the house. And I said, no, actually not lately. So hopefully I was like, it kind of decided to not be around, knock on wood, was what I'd said. And the next day that happened. So. I don't really want to push my luck no. with it tonight. All right, let's 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 respect those boundaries. I, I do believe that uh, sometimes the more open we are and invite other energies in from, you know, speaking to people. To some, I, I do believe that could be a, a door sometimes. So when you're doing your show, 
Brandon, what is your favorite topic? What's that one topic that you just you that really just lights a fire under you? Because you get a lot of stories. I will always go back to my something that relates to like what I experienced. So I'm going to go back towards the upright canine. I don't like saying dog man because I don't tell people I saw dog man. I mm -hmm. say I saw an upright walking canine because to me, dog man has a very sp specific look. It has the human hands. It has a very werewolf appearance. This thing, what I saw did not. It looked like a normal dog that just happened to stand up like a human. So I like hearing that stuff. And I've actually found out recently from doing the podcast that there has been other people in my area that have saw similar things. I've been trying to track down this person, but back in 1990, the same town, someone had one run into their campsite. Supposedly they said it was a werewolf. Ran in on two legs and started tearing the crap out of their campsite down by the river, which is only a couple miles from where I had my experience. And then someone told me recently in... 1987, I think they said it was, they were being stalked by two large black canines, wolf-looking canines out along the wood line outside of town, which is only a few miles from where this person said they got the werewolf that chased them out. And then this whole area is Native American lands originally. And the supposed story, I have not talked to any of the elders or anything about it. I need to try and do that, but, and I don't want to sound like it, whatever, but basically... The clan, the Miami Indians, what they're called, they're not really practicing like they, they don't have their own lands. And like it's more or less kind of like a bastardized version. A lot of them are just they don't do the normal job like all of us do. Like it's not an active like a reservation or anything. It's just they're still a group. They call themselves the Miami Indians. So I don't know how much of that is still out there, but supposedly the older ones that were involved in it said the lands were always protected by black upright walking wolf people. So if those stories are accurate and true, then this whole area has had reports to date back long before we were ever around. And your area is where? I live in Indiana. I live in North Central Indiana. So the Miami Indians were prevalent here back in the long before white settlers came through. Are you saying the Mayan in, in Miami? Miami Indians. Yeah, the Miami Indians. I don't know if they're a recognized tribe. I know, like, we have their little buildings and stuff around here for it. Like, I live in Miami County, and I'm pretty sure it's named after the Miami Indians. And there's some state lands, like forests and stuff around here, that's named after some of the people from the from the tribes and stuff. So you hear a lot about the mutilations of people where they've been um, torn apart and they have been, and, you know, you get your local law enforcement and animal services that say that, you know, that it's probably a pack of wild dogs, whatever. Do you think these things, some of those mauling, the people that were mauled to death could be attacked by these black dogs? It's a possibility, but this is where I come back to. I don't know if it's an intentional cover up. Mm -hmm. I think they're going by what they look at for evidence. And I think a lot of it shows, oh, it looks like it's an animal. So they're going to rule it off as an animal. If someone said, no, it was an upright running werewolf that did this, they're going to be out of a job. Pretty much, yeah. So they're going to go with what looks natural to them. So if they're saying, oh, it was a wild animal attack, well, they're not wrong. They're just not being specific of what they think it was. So I don't think a lot of these things are misrepresented in the sense of we're not telling anyone what really happened. I think they're just saying what they think because most people don't buy into a lot of the stuff that we talk to or what you talk about on these type of shows. Mm -hmm. And if anyone does that are in a professional coroner or something medical field, they're not going to risk their career on saying something that sounds mm -hmm. crazy to the, the average person, I don't think. 
we had a case like that in North Carolina, and they were saying it was a cover-up. It was it was a mysterious death, and you've probably heard about it, the retired teacher that got attacked. But mm -hmm. they were saying, well, everybody covered it up. But, you know, me working in, you know, the law enforcement capacity for 17 years, working with medics, fire personnel, that would have to be a deep cover up for all of those people to keep their mouths shut that, you know, a dogman killed these people if they knew about it. Um, Honestly, most medics that I know, most fire personnel I know would buck the system and say something's not right here. So I don't I don't think that was a cover up. I, I think once again, it was a creature unknown and they went by what they know and the knowledge they had and blamed it on a pack of wild dogs that apparently they never found the DNA to match those dogs. But that's that's where I remember that at. But with all the people that you interview when it comes to the black dogs, do you find there's a common denominator with these people that link them all together in a characteristic or are they just random people that have experiences or? For the most part, I've only talked to a handful of people that ever had any sort of like dog man encounters. One of them was just, uh, they were at her interview. She told me that resident evil dog. And by that, it, she said it looked like a zombie type of dog. She said it was like missing, had like holes in it. Like it's very strange. That's the first time I've ever, but it was, didn't look like a hairy dog. She said it looked like it was almost like rotting. So that's a very bizarre interview that I had for like description wise. I've never heard of something like that. Other people have reported seeing like similar thing, but they, they seen the hands. One guy said one was peeking around the tree at him. They seen the hands at it. Someone else recently has said that they were so close to it and it was chasing and they managed to get away. And I'm not trying to discredit anyone. That's not what I do on my show. I'm not going to say this. I feel like if something that large, seven feet tall, was chasing you through the woods, I have a feeling that if it wanted to get you, it probably would Absolutely. have. I don't see any single person going to be able to outmaneuver these things. If this is their natural area of running through the woods, you're not going to outrun something like that. If you try and run through the woods, you think you're going to outrun a mountain lion? No. Like, even okay. outrunning a bear is going to be hard to do. So... When people say they've had these experiences, and I've heard them on other shows, that they're kind of out there, outlandish or whatever, so I kind of take it with a grain of salt, but I'm not going to say they're lying about it or making it up because I wasn't there. But Exactly. Some, some of the things make me scratch my head a little bit. Well, well that just goes back to, to uh, there's things at this point in you know, my life where years ago I would have been like, no way. You know, but now I'm like, you hear the same stuff from the different people that don't even know each other mm -hmm. and same similarities come up. What about hellhounds? Do you think that these could be hellhounds or do you think hellhounds are something completely different? I think they're, I would say I think they're different, but at the same time, throughout history, you've had reports of these type of things and I believe it was in France in the 16 or 1700s. There was a movie, it was a French movie based off of it about 20 years ago, but I think it was Brotherhood of the Wolf or something they called it like that. But they were hunting this wolf creature because it was killing people, it was killing women and kids. And this was a true thing. They started having werewolf trials because they thought people were actually guilty of being a werewolf. It was almost like the Salem witch trials we had here in America. But this was in France and they were the werewolf trials. Wow. Before that, the Vikings had what they called berserkers, which were basically men that were dressed in wolf clothing, like they made furs with them or whatever. And they said they were spirits were entering their bodies and they were becoming like the wolf and they were ravenous and they used it in battle or whatever. And before them, there was a tribe supposedly, I think it was in. I don't remember if it was in Africa or maybe India, but somewhere there was supposedly a tribe of all dog men. I don't know much about that, but that was supposedly 
something that was encountered by a discovery, like people when they're going across back in the early centuries or whatever, they encountered that. And then I think it was St. Christopher. There's supposedly a photo of him and he has a wolf head. So a lot of people seem to think that maybe he was a dog man. I was like, I don't know. And even Anubis with the ancient Egyptians. Now the Egyptians had a lot of weird hieroglyphs. So basically they had stuff that looked, I know the TV show ancient aliens always points out certain things, but like Anubis was a, for all intents and purposes, a basically a jackal with a human body. A jackal is basically a dog man. Like, so and if you listen like through Europe, all the werewolf stuff that they've reported over the years, all the people here in the if Americans or whatever talked about stuff with like large black wolves, large white. Back in the day, there's been skeletons of dire wolves. They were very large wolves. I've wondered if maybe some of the things that people are seeing are not remnants from that. But that doesn't explain them walking on two legs. So that's kind of where I get hung up on it with it. Like I can understand the large giant sized wolf aspect to it, but none of that biologically makes sense for them to be on two legs. So. Have you come across another store that someone had with the original creature that you first saw that just seemed to be, have no head, just seemed to be like a, just a blob. No, I've, Strangely enough, that same year, there were reports of people seeing uh, the Fresno crawlers is what I think they were calling them. They were basically these white legs with a bulbous top walking. And they were called Fresno crawlers. But I don't, the descriptions of those other than the legs, like th what I saw was black. They weren't white. All the Fresno crawlers reports have been these things were white. And the top of them were like rounded from the description. I think I've seen people sketching or whatever. They had like a bulbous looking top part. This didn't have that. The best way I can describe it is it looked like it came up like where your arms and stuff would be, like where your shoulders and stuff would be. And they just kind of came like in on itself. Like it just went up and like kind of came back in. So it's like where the arms should be were missing. Basically, imagine like a T-shirt with the sleeves cut off, and then just this, like a turtle, kind like a turtle of. going in its shell. Kind of, yeah, but not. It wasn't rounded; like it was very humanoidish mm -hmm. body, but like there was no top to it, and no arms. That's why I said it was like a turtle. It just kind of went down in there. Let's go to orbs. Do you think orbs are related to Sasquatch, Bigfoot, Dog Man, Lizard Man? Uh, I think everything is energy one way or the other. So if mm -hmm. these orbs are being seen, who is to say that that's not the energy that's going to manifest itself into these things coming into our world? Maybe the orbs that we're seeing is these things coming in. That's their little quote unquote portal that people say they hear noises or see portals or whatever. What if the energy is coming through our world and that orb is that thing coming in here? You think it's related to the ley lines? What's your opinion on the ley lines? The episode that came out today on my show oh. was about the 33rd parallel. So, I'll have to look that up. Yeah, it's all about the 33rd parallels ley line. So I do believe there's a lot of weird stuff when it comes to ley lines. There are basically the guy I talked to today or when I, the episode that came out today on my show. He kind of mentioned this and I, I agree with him. Think of the ley lines of being like a circuit. So like all these lines, like have you have circuit boards or whatever, and like certain ones have different energy or whatever. So I think every one of these could be like its own little circuit. So basically the 33rd parallel he was talking about has a lot of high strangeness energy that goes on there. And there's been a lot of weird events that have happened along the 33rd parallel. Like just to throw that out here for the listeners. Um, the Bermuda triangles on the 30 is like in the 33rd parallel. Dallas, Texas, where uh, Kennedy was assassinated. It was on the 33rd parallel from the 33rd degree bridge or something like that. Something to do with 30 years of the, even the underpass where it happened. Hollywood is on the 33rd parallel. Roswell, New Mexico is in the 33rd parallel. 
um, Nagasaki and Hiroshima where we dropped the nuclear weapons are in the 33rd parallel. Israel is in the 33rd parallel. And some of the pyramids are in the 33rd parallel. Not in Egypt, but some of the other ones elsewhere. There's just a lot of very historical things along that parallel. So if you look into oh, it, accident. yeah, it's very, uh, I'm not a religious person, but for biblical purposes, um, a lot of people like to throw out the Nephilim or Nephilim or everyone will pronounce it, but 33% of the angels were kicked out of heaven and they were the fallen angels and they fell into the 33rd parallel. And I forget the name of the mountain, but they fell there, which is in the 33rd parallel. Jesus was born in the 33rd parallel. He was crucified in the 33rd parallel. 33 degree Mason is the highest ranking Mason you can get to. There, there's something with that number. And one of their biggest temples or whatever they have is somewhere, I forget the exact location, but somewhere here in America, but guess what parallel it falls into? 33? Yep. De definitely check out that episode. It's very interesting. I definitely will. But when you start to look at some of the structures of the city, even Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. it, even the roads, it, they're all connected with the way they're designed. It, and it goes back to the 33rd mason and the architectural uh, architectural um factor to it uh, every it's all by design yeah it's i think there's a lot of interesting things when it comes to masons and the tinfoil part of my show that, that you asked me some of my favorite stuff i i do love going down into those rabbit holes of conspiracies and hidden histories and stuff like that so that's where the whole name kind of came from I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, I think that's the perfect name for your show. So do you, let's go down the UFO route for a moment. Roswell, and you said all of these are in the 33rd parallel, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. What are your thoughts on the Roswell, the Skinwalker Ranch, and all of that, that strange occurrences are going on? Well, I think it all has something to do with the energies that come off the ley lines. And for some reason, I think the 33rd parallel is very strong with a lot of the strange activity. And you mentioned Skinwalker Ranch. It is not in the parallel, but it is on the outskirts of that parallel. It is at the very beginning of the 34th parallel, but it's only missing it by like 40 to 60, maybe 80 miles. So it's not too far out of that energy area the one of the other things that actually i forgot to mention is uh los alamos where they practiced in white sands uh testing area where they practiced testing out the nuclear weapons were all within the 33rd parallel too really so, yeah there's there's just a lot of weird events that have happened along that parallel and again Travis Walton, you know who that, like the guy from those of the that, Snowflake, yeah. Arizona is also in the 33rd parallel. So get out of here. Yeah. So Not again, there, there's, there's just so much weird stuff that, along that parallel. So it is, a, I've been looking, for, I recorded this episode, my show, I'm almost two months in advance to recording wise. So like when I record a couple of interviews a week, I only release two episodes a week. So if I'm doing three to four interviews a week, I'm getting a big backlog. And I feel bad that there's that long of a wait period. So I recorded this interview in the middle of April and it just dropped today. So that's almost two months waiting. And I've been waiting for this episode to come out because there was so much cool stuff that we talked about. And I've been anxious for it to come out. So I'm so glad it actually dropped today. Wow. And you know what? I love your stuff. But um, the nuclear aspect of it and all of that, I, I wonder, and this may sound like a stupid question, do you think the government cap capitalizes or there's agencies out there that capitalizes on the energy that you get from the 33rd? I do believe there is a reason why 
majority of the test and the majority, the only places they've ever been dropped on are on that fault line. I don't know if they're using that energy to power said weapons. Now, I put on my tinfoil hat here. There is a lot of people that don't even believe nuclear weapons are even real. They think those are just, they're made to make people be afraid. They think that's like the overall threat that, oh, we don't want to have a nuclear war or whatever. That's deterrent from people or whatever. So they don't even know if they're even real. I wasn't around back in those days to verify one way or the other, so I can't say if they're real or not. I do know that something happened. Like, you could talk to people in Japan or whatever, something had to have happened to them. But a lot of people, I've come to, to find out, like, to go into these conspiracy realms, they don't believe in nuclear weapons. I, I have no reason to say they're not real, but... But when it comes to, when you look into the testing areas and everything else and how they were built and how they were launched and everywhere they were dropped at, mm -hmm. they're all picking that same fault line. Or not, I say uh, fault line, I mean ley line. Oh, I do word salad all the time. Um, there was actually a lady that wrote a book and I cannot, it's called, I think it's called 72 minutes about the nuclear um what would happen during a nuclear you know i think i think i know what you're talking about the book i don't know the name of i remember i remember which one it is that that goes pretty deep i would actually recommend people read that but um she just she said there is a map where you can find the sites where they're at and i'm wondering if they are near that ley line too that would that would be something worth looking at. Where are you located at? What state are you from? Sir, I'm North Carolina, right outside of Fort Bragg. Okay. Yeah, they're I, gonna get us if it ever happens. <laughs> I know uh I don't know if that you're within that fault line. I think you might be too far north or ley line. I think you're in the thirty fourth parallel. But I do know um the Georgia guidestones are also in the thirty third parallel. Mm -hmm. I always thought those were interesting. I never even heard of them before. And then like a week after I heard about them, they got blown up. Which yeah, I blown was up. Yes. Was it that strange when that happened? Yeah. Just, uh, what do you the think about the, the, the dumbs? The what? Underground, the underground oh, tunnels under the... The underground possibly mm -hmm. secret bases and things. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that they're probably true because why wouldn't they be? There was a big, we talked about on one of my live streams a couple of weeks ago, but we talked about Denver Airport that supposedly has a huge underground system that people, miles upon miles of weird tunnels and stuff underground, and they have no idea what it's all for. I was like, I don't know what the underground of airports look like, so maybe it's normal or something, but there's been so much weird activity, reports from people, a lot of weird, strange things about Denver. It, well, it's not just Denver. I know Fort Bragg, and I was watching an episode of Sean Ryan, and anytime he has anything remotely about something that goes on around Fort Bragg, and, and it's not the first time I've heard it because, you know, I've been around this area all of my life. But um, he had a guest on the show that actually eventually went to work with Black Waters but they went um, under one of the tunnels in Fort Bragg and there was a piece of granite gravitating. And um, the, it was in one of these forbidden tunnels. And he said, just to hear the guy explain it, it him and his father got harassed after that um, because they wouldn't sign a non-disclosure um, his dad was some kind of special contractor and he would go down in the tunnel and he would, um, I guess, construct shoot rooms and, um, you know, the, the, the training rooms for special ops. And um, if you ever get a chance, I'll send you the link to that show. I think you'll enjoy it. 
but I, I think they're all around and I find that one fascinating and I'm just wondering if, if, if it all fits together and this may be me just 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 me thinking out loud you, you can get uh, you know literally a map of the nuke sites or where where they're being held you then you have the the missing 411 maps then you have the tunnel maps that seem to coincide with the missing 411 then you had the domes under there and it just is it, like it's just all connects whether yeah. that's a coincidence or not i don't know you can also put in when you uh do an overlay of the cave systems and then the missing 401 like when people go missing you can also put encrypted experiences like cryptid sightings for like bigfoot or something like that and overlay all those maps and they all seem to line up with each other like anytime there's people that go missing there's also been reports of weird sightings of either ufos or cryptid or something cave systems national forest I don't want to say that every time a person goes missing that it's something strange, but at the same time, like it is. It matches up. Yeah. But to be a hundred percent honest, I think a lot of the things that people go missing is they've either gotten off the beaten path of where they're used to going and got lost or the, the real monster that they've encountered is probably another human. And that's correct. There's a, there's a lot of weird evil people out there and I guess if they were going to do some heinous things in the middle of nowhere in a national forest would be a place to go and do that because chances are no one's going to see you. I agree with you 100%. I, I've seen things that I wish I could unsee and that's why I kind of take a lot harder approach on my show because I just you can have a serious topic and not, I, I don't know. So one more question, where can we find your podcast? Let's put it out there for everyone to hear. And if you would like to hear more about what I do in the show and all the stuff I put tinfoil tales, it's basically the easiest way is tinfoil tales.com. There is, links on there where it'll take you to different streaming apps so basically like spotify apple whatever you prefer to listen to a podcast on the show is available and all that there is a youtube channel it's basically audio only but on the last thursday of every month i do a live stream at nine o'clock eastern time it's called tinfoil tells after dark and i've started to make it into a live call-in show so I've only had a few people was actually called in, but basically it's an episode of my show and then there's a phone number. They call in and they can talk about their experiences live during the live stream. So trying that out, I think it's kind of a little different from the usual way I go about it, but that's basically where anyone wants to find me again, that or social media. One last question. What do you think of lizard man? <laughs> <laughs> lizard man or you want to go down man, the road? Lizard. let's go down the road let's go for it lizard man i think if anyone actually saw lizard man it would maybe have been uh one of the reptilian overlords <laughs> i <laughs> i say that with a laugh but the, years ago i would never think of something that could be possible but anymore i'm kind of like you know what i'm not if if the people upper echelon is a bunch of reptilian aliens i wouldn't be surprised so. i i remember we had the lizard man when i was coming up in uh, south carolina it made the news everywhere about the lizard man attacking cars i just thought i'd ask you on that so no I, i've heard a little enjoyed. bit about it but i heard uh, something not long ago about a possible alligator man in florida i don't know I think everywhere has their own little weird things. So that's what makes the world go around. That is true. <laughs> okay, Brandon. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show and I've enjoyed talking to you and we're going to jump off here and I'm going to jump on your show.
Yeah. And I have really enjoyed the chat. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.